Now do I know better? Oh yeah. No, I know better. Am I gonna do it anyway? Yeah. Hello folks, Phil Gallagher aka Thraben Yu here for another Legacy video and today we are going to go back to my roots and we are going to play 60 card death and taxes featuring Mangara of Corindor. Now this is a really sweet card that used to be kind of the engine that defined death and taxes. To understand why this card is good you need to understand the templating of the ability. So Mangara's tap ability says remove Mangara of Corridor and target permanent from the game. So note here that the target is the other permanent. So if you bounce or flicker Mangara in response to its activated ability, guess what? You still get to exile the thing even though Mangara is not exiled. So this is not one of those instances where one of the things is gone, so it fizzles. Uh, you know, that might happen with, you know, a goblin welder or something like that. So what people used to do is put an Aether Vial on three, activate Mangara's ability, hold priority, tap Caracas, bounce Mangara, exile a permanent, tap Aether Vial on three, put Mangara back in, and repeat the process to exile one permanent per turn. And in the glory days of Legacy, you would literally just take out every single one of your opponent's lands, leaving them with no permanence, while, you know, some 2-1 creature like Thalia beat them down. Now, why don't we see this anymore? Because this is obviously powerful. Reason number one has to do with black creatures, and more generally, removal getting better and more widespread. It used to be that in an entire 60 card deck, a deck would have four lightning bolts or four swords to plowshares, just like four removal spells in game one scenarios. So if your opponent uses the removal spells on like the Mother of the Rune, uh, Mother of Runes and Stoneforge Mystic in the early game, Mangara can just take over the late game because there's nothing left. Well now, everyone's running around playing their Plague Engineers, Orcish Bowmasters, Source the Plowshares and Leyline Binding, maybe a Terminus, maybe there's a bunch of other random stuff in the deck that can also get rid of creatures. There's so much more removal, and the removal is better than it used to be as a whole. At least the secondary removal, that is. I mean, Source of Plowshares and Lightning Bolt, still really damn good. Reason number two is that in the past, I don't know, five years or so, we've just gotten better removal options within the color white as well. Skyclave activation, Skyclave apparition is kind of like a Mangara activation with haste. And we've gotten other things like Lorin as well that make it so that Mangara's effect is not just the universal catch all, Skyclave apparition is. And Skyclave apparition tends to pair a little bit better with some of the things like Yorian. Uh, Mangara's timing is a little bit restrictive in a way that Skyclave apparitions isn't. Uh, so that being said, let's look at the whole deck list here. Now, today's video is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc., Moxfield.com, and Eminence Gaming. And remember, if you need any paper magic cards, I don't know, just picking a one at random here, check out Cool Stuff Inc. and use promo code THRABENU to save 5% on your order. So what I've done here is I've taken a recent 60-card D&T Top 8 from a Legacy Challenge, and I've just subbed in three copies of Mangara of Corridor. Should you be running three copies of this card? No. Should you be running any copies of this card? Eh, probably not. But damn it, we're gonna do it today, and we're gonna we're gonna live DNT like it is the old days. Now, slotting these into the deck is going to come at the cost of some flexibility, right? So you'll notice that some things that would normally be in the deck as additional removal, uh, like say solitude, or not are not here. And it does mean that we play some cards in lower numbers. So for example, we have two Spirit of the Labyrinths, two Recruiter of the Guards, um, and maybe a Silver Bullet or a few less than you might be normally seeing. Most of the stuff here is pretty stock at this point. If you haven't been following D&T really closely, you might have missed out on the Battle of Bywater, which is a pseudo board wipe with some degree of restrictions. Um, and this is somewhat commonly played as a sideboard card, uh, often in two or three copies. 
Uh, yeah, so let's see if we can Mangara lock some people, folks. Okay. This is perfectly reasonable versus a fair deck. Completely dead to a combo deck. Ah, oh, damn it, I didn't switch out my planes. Hunt, before I even start recording. Eh? Delver? Delver. Ooh, and it's Delver where my opponent... Okay, sure. Where my opponent didn't play a turn one threat. Um, I think I just Wasteland my opponent. Like, the Wasteland makes my Thalia better. In the not-too-distant future, I'll go ahead and Wasteland now, prior to my opponent getting another draw or two for a look at something like a Stifle. Ooh, no Brainstorm in response. All right. Note that if we were playing a Yorian version of Death and Taxes where I needed to work towards five mana for the end game, I probably would not have Wastelanded. But we're not. So here we are. I don't like this card. Like, I wish it was just a basic planes in this hand. Monastery Swift Spear. Interesting. So this is more like a blue red Delver Burn style deck. Do I want to source the plowshares to play Thalia on curve? Kind of. I don't really want my swords to get countered. But I don't know that I want to get behind curve here. All right, there is the daze. The Swiss Spear also just gets so much worse if my Thalia resolves on curve. We are also just like flush with removal for later on in the game. So I'm not sweating it. Ooh, that's interesting. I think I'm just playing the Thalia though. Ooh, we are getting a response. Will it be a brainstorm or a secondary daze? Secondary daze. Again, not particularly a big deal. Now, if my opponent uses their turn to wasteland this, that's slightly awkward for me, but you know, I have reasonable plays. I do have to keep in mind that cards like Price of Progress could be in my opponent's shell, and I could get punished for Lux Slot lands. Um, again, Swiss Spear is very uncommon. Taking two damage is fine. Our life total is a resource. Okay. I might just want to Skyclave this critter. It plays into a third daze, but if my opponent... I, I don't know exactly what my opponent's deck list is going to look like, but if my opponent has Murktide Regent, I would much rather have Source of Plowshares in my hand than Skyclave Apparition. So I will play into Daze 3. Force of Will, Pitching, Spell Pierce. Sure. This is all fine. All right, now we might see some Swift Spear actually get in for a reasonable amount of damage. We don't care if a Swift Spear is attacking for one or two. All right. Hashtag worse than a basic planes? Oh, wow. Um... That would not be the land that I was going after, but okay. That really makes me think that they have, like, a Marktide Regent, which I plan on just answering with swords, swords, probably. I haven't given my opponent a good Lightning Bolt target yet. My opponent taking out Port makes me think that they want to play a Marktide Regent on their turn. can't really accomplish everything that I want to accomplish here. I think I am just going to go ahead, tap out for the Mangara, Probably take one more from Monastery Swift Spear here and play around Marktide Regent to the best of my ability. So there's the second land drop. There's Dragon Rage Channeler instead. Oh god, are we going to get to untap with Mangara? Holy shit, folks, we get to untap with Mangara. And we drew another swords. Good god. All right. Activate Mangara. Targeting Dragon Rage Channeler. Hold priority. Bounce Mangara. Goodbye, Dragon Rage Channeler. Spell Pierce is a thing. So I could have done that first. Let's go ahead and attempt this now. If I get pierced, I get pierced. My opponent has had a chance to brainstorm. Ah, it is a pierce. Alright, so that's my bad. I should have done that first. Yeah, and I, I think I will just take another point of damage from Monastery Swift Spear in order to uh, play around Murktide Regent. 
Like, I want two swords to plowshares that card specifically. And I'm pretty healthy right now. Okay. Let's just draw some land. Fantastic. So it, it doesn't feel like Murktide anymore. Is it just another Pierce or Daze? I'll just play Mangara again. Can do that with Lightning Bolt protection and not even have to use Source of Plowshares on this Swift Spear. Like, I can take some more damage. I may be playing this one more conservatively than I need to, but it seems like this way wins. Sure. I'll take one. Go to 11. Oh, Mom's cool. So, same thing. Activate Mangara. Target Dragon Rage Channeler. Hold priority. Bounce Mangara. We're doing the thing. At this point, I think I will play a Mother of Runes. I probably should have used Sword Splashers first. Or yet another Spell Pierce. I started thinking about Force of Negation as like being a reasonable card that my opponent could have. And so I was thinking about playing around that. Yeah, I should have done this first. All right, cool. And if this gets lightning bolted, that's no big deal. That means my opponent is out of resources when I have Mangara. And if my opponent plays Murktide for their turn, like, I just have a Flicker Wisp with, like, as protection. Sure. Yeah, Murktide is fine. So this leaves my opponent Hellbent. I will go ahead and play Flicker Wisp. Flicker a land. And then I wall Murktide Regent and all Mangara it eventually. Take my land back. All right, opponent is making the attack. I'll block and pro blue. And uh, until my opponent draws something like a Lightning Bolt, this is just good. Lion Sash? No, let's just, let's just play the Mangara. Let's get that removal spell in play. And we're just going to play defensively. Like, dragging this game on is fully the plan, even if I don't hit a Caracas to do really cool things. Unless opponent has something spicy, like a game one fire ice that could ping two creatures at the same time. Like, we're pretty darn good. Alright, so opponent wants to force Flicker Wisp out of play. This is slightly awkward. I'm going to target the Flicker Wisp. I will give the pro red. So the lightning bolt fizzles. I think I even just like block the Murktide Regent and don't take eight here. Like I don't want to just be dead to another lightning bolt when I just have a removal spell on board and really good tools for the matchup. So let's Lion Sash. I don't know that I need to start eating yet. Let's play an Aether Vial. Pass the turn here. We will trade Murktide Regent for Mangara. And I have most things covered. Another Murktide Regent would be a little bit annoying, but I can start working on that problem immediately. Let's start eating. Bam, bam. I am going to take one more permanent out here. At this point, this is a creature that lives through lightning bolt based removal on its own. It's possible I am supposed to just immediately go for the instants and sorceries to shrink a Murktide Regent that my opponent top decks, but after this exact turn cycle I'm not expecting Murktide Regent to ever be a problem because my opponent's graveyard will just be gone. So yes, put in a Mother of Runes. And now we're going to do a little old school trick here, Vile Trigger on the stack. We're going to go ahead and put this in while it's still on one, and then we'll go ahead and take this up to two so that next turn we can use it for Skyclave. Fantastic. Let's start eating. Take out two of those. We're going to swing for six, and then I'll remove the two instants and sorceries from my opponent's graveyard in their upkeep and plan on killing them next turn. So goodbye, Bolt. Goodbye, Brainstorm. And that's the concession. Good old Mangara lock. Doing some work. Alright, um... I have some extra removal spells that I can think about playing. The Battle of Bywater is something that will hit Delver, Dragon Rage Channeler, Murktide Regent, but miss Swift Spear. 
a lot of my creatures don't actually have three power. So this is often asymmetrical, minus like my Flicker Wisps or something that has a piece of equipment on it. Uh, Ley Lines and Rest in Peace are kind of the tier two of things that I can be thinking about. This is kind of one of those things where we're reboarded in some capacity for this matchup. We just have a high density of removal in game one and relevant cards. I don't know that I'm going to sideboard much. I could go down on my own Thalias when I'm on the draw to make my Swords to Plowshares, Council's Judgment, and such that I'm boarding in less awkward, which I will probably just do. Go all of those out for these and probably play the rest in peace to round things out. This still leaves me with 22 creatures, which is about the low end of where I like to be after sideboarding in a fair matchup. I'll reconsider the Thalias when I'm on the play. This is a great hand that eats shit to Wasteland. Keep, like, the Rest in Peace Lion Sash Nonbo is not the greatest, admittedly. But I kind of like how this looks. Like, the Mom forces early removal, otherwise my creatures are very good. And I have two different relevant turn one plays, or sorry, turn two plays. Mm, don't really want another one of those right now. Now, notably, if we turn Dragon Rage Janeler into a permanent 1-1, one, one, like, life's pretty good. But, like, the way, the way we lose this game is just this Karakas getting wastelanded, and then I miss on a white source for at least two turns. But, like, three copies of Karakas should be in the deck. Just, like, we're doing this. It is not wrong. All right, 19. Basic Planes is great. Makes it less likely that my opponent will want to go after my Caracas. So my opponent showed me multiple copies of Spell Pierce in game one. They may or may not have boarded those out. Playing Lion Sash is a really low impact play because it eats it to like Daze, Lightning Bolt, any red sideboard, uh, one mana removal spell. I don't think I'm into this this early in the game. So I think Rest in Peace is going to be my play here. It's insane if it resolves, and if it uses one of my opponent's counter spells. Cool. Oh. Uh, okay, no, they pitched a stifle. Uh, if we were a little later in the game, they definitely could have, like, stifled the trigger and gone on with life. I now know that I have to play around stifle, which makes uh, Mangara slightly more awkward. Good to know. My opponent's down to two cards already, though. Uh, I think whatever I play this turn gets lightning bolted. Offer up one of the Mangaras. Allow that to be dazable. Merktide slips in next turn, even if I eat one card from Graveyard with Lion Slash Sash a decent amount of time. Let's offer up a Mangara to the Gods of Days. Alright, it's in play. Alright, Lightning Bolt those Lightning Bolt things. My opponent topped a card there. Which probably means either Second Threat or Sorcery for the purposes of uh, Growing Dragon Rage Channeler. Yep, I'll take one, that's fine. Okay, so my opponent's going to blow their graveyard. Making a 6-6 Mark Tide Regent that I'm hoping to turn back into a 3-3. Fantastic. So, let's Flicker Wisp, and we're just going to blink that Merktide region, turning it into a 3-3 that I can trade with the Flicker Wisp, and then we can start looking at locking my opponent out of the game with the remaining cards in my hand. That's all fine. Ooh, my opponent put a card on top. That probably means another Lightning Bolt. Ooh. What do you like so much that you kept in hand that wasn't just an answer to Flicker Wisp? That's kind of a tough one. Fire Ice would be rough with the plays that I want to make. I want to play Mangara and a 2-drop this turn. I think we're just jamming. I was maybe thinking about a Brainstorm here? Didn't. What does that mean? I think I'm going to go ahead and play this, and then Lion Sash becomes my mana sink next turn if things don't go well. I'm just a little 
confused about what my opponent kept. I hope it's not uh, the one red do one damage to everything card. That would suck. Okay, no attacks from my opponent. Ooh, that's really good. I would like to cast a Stoneforge Mystic. It is in play. A Stifle. Sure. Bell Pierce goes to the yard. Trigger gets stifled. I will play a Lion Sash. Let's attempt this. Activate Mangara. Target Murktide Regent. Hold priority. Baracus bounce this. Cool. Nice. At this point, I think I'm willing to attack with both of these. Opponent's at 11 with one card left. I think my opponent's out of the game if I untap with these creatures. Okay. Good stuff. Let's start eating. Yum, yum, yum. Um, I think this turn cycle, I, I just obliterate their graveyard. Rather than do anything else here. Uh, bam. This is fine. This is fine. I think this is still fine. If I trade and my opponent can brainstorm again, they take half their life total. Yeah. All right, they're at two. And now Lion Sash isn't da dead to a one damage red sweeper. And if my opponent plays a one damage red sweeper, my graveyard is very full for this to just um, obliterate my opponent. Oh, they're still going. And green mana for the first time. Seek the beast. Sure. Put a card on top. A monastery swift spear and a wasteland. Uh, so they are deterministically dead in the air then. Sure. Or I guess there's unknown cards in hand. I shouldn't say that. Opponent said some kind words in the chat, and uh, we're going to move on to round two. Looking to run a great CNH event? Having hosted over 100 successful tournaments, Eminence Gaming has your back with Command Tower. With its intuitive tournament manager dashboard, you can handle everything from decklist submission to player management in just a few clicks. Then, all players need to do is scan a generated QR code to have access to your full tournament bracket. Put your players first with seamless pairing software and real-time access to standings. Take the guesswork out of tournaments. Give Command Tower a try for your next event. Okay. This is one of those hands where if my opponent has a wasteland, I'm in a lot of trouble. I'm on the draw. So I get a 22 out of 53 at a land. And then a 22 out of 51 if I miss after that. Sorry, 22 out of 53, and then 22 out of 52. As long as I... Well, hmm. The fact that I have two different relevant one-drop plays and a good play versus combo after my opponent has mulliganed once is pushing me ever so slightly towards keep. Like, we also have, like, Recruiter, Flicker, Wisp nonsense as this game goes very long. There are ways this hand can go wrong, and if my opponent kept 7, I may be mulligan this and keep something more stable. Again, if we had a Yorian top end, I think I throw this one back. Grief Pitching Exhume. So, as far as Reanimator goes, this hand is solid. We have a removal spell, I have a Caracas to bounce a legendary creature, and I have a way to tax my opponent's stuff. This is a fine hand versus Reanimator for game 1. All right, Swords is gone. Bayou? Or like Sideboard Abrupt Decay? Oh, how do we feel about that? I feel like I would like to keep you off of Animate Dead in the short term, because I'm expecting end of, end of turn in Tomb here. Yeah, there it is. This can get like an Archon of Cruel. Oh, okay. Still going for the Grizzle Brand, despite the fact that it is legendary. Which is reasonable. Okay. So we're chilling. And this now is like ticking the needle in my direction. If this Thalia hits play before my opponent hits a land drop, the game's not literally over, but life is fucking bad for my opponent. Yes. Oh. <laughs> 
Uh, it feels good to do this from time to time. I do miss this slightly. File goes up. Land goes in play. Let's hit my opponent for two. Put them to 18. Cast Recruiter of the Guard. Yes, I will use this ability. I think with Thalia in play, I can just grab Lion Sash right now. Yeah, and that's good enough for my opponent. Uh, we're also pretty well prepared for this matchup with five pieces of Graveyard Hate in a 60-card deck. So Deafening Silence is more reasonable on the play than draw. Mind Break Trap is the opposite, where it's more reasonable on the draw than play. Uh, oh, sorry, six. I missed Rest in Peace. Um, basically, most cards that aren't Cataclysm are viable here, so I'm going to start sideboarding backwards. I'm going to think about the things that I don't want in the deck. So Jitte is obviously going to go. It's possible the entire Stoneforge Mystic package just goes. With Mangaras, we're going to be pretty good against Show and Tell, and if I leave in Swords to Plowshares for this matchup, we'll also be fine versus random dorks that my opponent plays. Uh, you know, the Shouldreds, Dalthy Voidwalker sorts of things. Skyclave is a medium minus card here that I might keep as an out to animate dead and random creatures. What does it look like if I cut the entire Stoneforge Mystic package? That's this plus one other random card. I think with Leyline of the Void, I don't really need to consider Mindbreak Trap all that much. Battle of Bywater and Council's Judgment are both slow. I think I'm going to Battle of Bywater to have an out to multiple creatures reanimated. And call that good. Hands great. Leyline starts in play, greatly reducing the power of cards like Grief. That is an unmask targeting me, which presumably takes my swords to plowshares. No. Oh. Sure. Are you going to reanimate that? Okay. No, that's cute. That uh, answers the ley line. Sure. That's one I haven't had come up before. Thalia's fine. Would I like a 4 4? Or would I like an Aether Vial? If I play Aether Vial, I can just port my opponent every turn for the rest of the game. That sounds pretty damn good. Yeah, note that 60 card Death and Taxes almost never played Leyline of the Void um, back in the Mangara days because the format was slower as a whole and like it wasn't uncommon. Tyrannox Rex. Fuck yeah. Um, anyway, it wasn't uncommon to play three or four copies of Rest in Peace in your sideboard. So. Porting my opponent and playing Thalia end up in similar spots for the next turn cycle. You have Ward. Ward 4 is kind of gross. I think we're just dropping the Thalia into play here and trying to dodge another reanimate or alternatively land plus 2 drop reanimation spell. Makes my Swords to Plowshares slightly more awkward, but like... Swords is already not answering this, so I think that's fine. And now I can port my opponent off their bad lands very consistently. Good stuff. Alia crashes in. I wanted thought for a surprisingly long time there. I'm not sure why exactly. I think I go ahead and cast this. Possible leaving up Swords to Plowshares is correct. Because, like, Grief is a card that exists, Thoughtseize is a card that exists, and I'd prefer not to lose this before I get a 4-4 creature out of the deal. Really? Okay, yeah. It's, it's like, not explicitly wrong to do that, it's just a little brave. Um, I'm gonna do a quick count. So it is probably objectively better to tick Vial up towards 3, because I can comfortably cast a 2-drop and still port... All right, that's not what I am looking for right now. But I think it's an okay card to draw. It is nice insurance. And that card specifically means that I can go after Skyclave Apparition with Swords to Plowshares. That is a grief. So, Ward 4? Maybe I let Grief take one of these 
and keep the other around rather than just take the 4-4 body. Let's just keep an answer. I've lost the Battle of Bywater. Okay, so do I source to Plowshares now to put my opponent on a two-turn clock? My opponent has already shown me that they don't have reanimate. That already would have happened. I think I am going to go for it. Let's just take that 4-4. Four, four. Oh right, it gives my opponent life. It's not a two-turn clock. Whoops. All right, always no, always yield. Nice. Now it's a two-turn clock. All right, send them. Now my opponent has not batched, unfortunately. So I can't just like flicker wisp out a land here in a very savage way. Now uh, we have gotten the GGs from the opponent. All right, we're two and zero. All right, we will keep this opening hand. Uh, we would like to draw a little bit more mana here. Wasteland is not really currently usable as Wasteland. Are we doing this again? We're doing this again, and I might have to immediately use Wasteland as Wasteland. Oh, miss. Okay. So, if I Wasteland, Flashback Faithless Looting is less likely. It also makes it less likely that a creature hits play next turn. But with double Thalia and Spirit, I fucking desperately need land to. I think I am going to go ahead and fire off the Wasteland. Cool. No Entomb. We're further away from Flashback Faithless Looting. Black? Thoughtseize is fine. My hand is very redundant. Uh, my opponent will probably take Swords to Plowshares here. It is, in my estimation, easily the best card in the hand. And we get two draw steps to hit a land to start playing Spirit of the Labyrinth and Thalia to lock our opponent out. Well, soft lock our opponent, more realistically. Okay, yep. Okay. Three of a kind is pretty good in poker. Often less good in Magic the Gathering than in poker, though. All right, there's land drop two. My opponent can now flash back Faithless Looting. Oh, no. And my opponent presumably has a reanimation card. It's an Atraxa. And an Exhum. So Atraxa is ultimately a legendary creature. Um, and the, the hits here weren't actually all that good. Like, I have Caracas just as an out to bounce an Atraxa out of play. All right, reanimate over Thoughtseize. And taking a new Entomb, which means that's not there, that's not there. One, two, three, four. Okay, I know four of their five cards. They unmask me, getting rid of Animate Dead. We've got Entomb and reanimate for next turn. It is not great. So... I need to slow my opponent from casting both of these in the same turn cycle and then give myself a chance to prolong the game. Entomb into Reanimate is very likely to beat me, but we're still playing Magic. I will go ahead and Spirit of the Labyrinth. Mom, target Thalia, give Pro Black. Bash in for two points of damage. Doesn't matter a lot in the link in like the world where Am I on crazy pills? In no, like I'm going to go back to the chat. Chose Entomb, did not cast Entomb. Exiled Animate Dead to thing. Yeah, okay. Um I could be wrong. That feels like an objective misplay. Like my opponent could have reanimated this turn. Um, I, I don't get to capitalize on that mistake, unfortunately. I am dead to the flyer. GG. All right, so same thing as before. I think I did the seven cards, Stoneforge Mystic package out for these six cards and Battle of Bywater. Now, one big difference this game 
is that when I'm on the play, I can think about deafening silence. It is a way to make it to Thalia Spirit rest in peace. It's a little less necessary if I'm playing Leyline of the Void. If I board those in, it's not crazy to get rid of these and to do this. If I get rid of one Skyclave, I could then go like Stoneforge, Stoneforge, Cauldra to have an alternative fast clock for when I do have the game locked up a little bit. That feels fine for being on the play. Uh, nah. Uh, okay. Math time. So I have 15 white sources, and I would say I need to hit one within three draws. We are 80% chance to hit within three draws, which is the number that I think we get. If we change that to two, it's only 66%. I think I find this keep acceptable but not strong. I don't know that it's worth going to five. We're just relatively solid versus the graveyard-based plan and versus natural drawn lands. I'm going to go to my own turn to see if I draw a white source before I take this out. Unmask pitching in tomb is fine. Okay, sure. That should be beatable in all but the absolute worst fail cases. Sure. I would have known my opponent was going to do something like that. I would have just wastelanded them when they went to beginning of combat and stopped that line in the first place, but I'm not too worried about it. Sure. Three damage is no big deal. Not a great draw step. That's fine. I'm at 14. Classic. So we failed the 80%. All right, there's another basic. We're at 11. Thoughtsies is fine. I lose Swords to Plowshares, which makes the Spirit of the Labyrinth ever so more annoying. Okay. I'm at 8. All right, Red Man is fine. We're just scared of something like a shouldered that my opponent casts here. That's something like a shouldered. Another colorless land. Um, at this point, I'm dead. Just a quick correction here, because I realized that I typed something in wrong. Um, I was 59% likely to hit within three. So we had five draws that game, I think. So 77.5% of the time we see a white source. Um, so less than I initially said. My bad on that. I just realized it when I looked at the other screen. Today's video is sponsored by Moxfield.com, and I personally keep all of my deck lists for every format on this site. I love that I can go and sort them by types and tags if I need to. There's a lot of different viewing options. It can give you some math about your mana symbol, your curve, and you can even play test and do sample opening hands with it. Check this site out if you haven't before. It's awesome. All right, I've kept my opening hand here. It looks like we are playing against a mono black helm deck of some kind, uh, presumably with Beseech the Mirror. My hand's okay against the creature side of the equation here and pretty bad versus the combo side. We can do Flicker Wisp on Chrome Box. It's a thing that will want to keep in mind for this matchup. But honestly, we're hoping that my opponent, like, Dark Rituals, Opposition Agents, or something like that, that I can just remove with Swords to Plowshares. It's just super fucking awkward that, like, Stoneforge Mystic is the play that I want to make this turn, which, like, opens me up to that. So, yeah. But Lion Sash looks like a pretty bad play right now, so I am going to Stoneforge directly into an Opposition Agent. I do so knowingly and willingly. Cool. Did not get punished. Uh, we're going to take the fastest clock here, rather than something that is more hard castable if my opponent plays like a Shouldered Edict or something like that. All right, there's Ancient Tomb. All right, we're griefing. I understandably lose the Cauldra. I just don't really have something that I'm working towards that beats Helm. 
They don't have Wasteland or anything like that right now. We do a Love Tap on my opponent. And I think I'm interested in getting Mother of Runes going rather than playing Lion Sash to uh, potentially stop a Grief from coming back. Uh, let's just double Mom here. Makes me worse against Plague Engineer. That tends, tends to be a sideboard card. Uh, yeah, Opposition Agents is fine. We've got swords for that. Alright, are we dead? We are dead. Yup, that'll do. I mean, we, we knew from the get-go that that was going to be a problem. The good news is, like, we are very interactive against that stuff, just not in that particular game. Council's Judgment is great. Cataclysm might be playable. My opponent's deck doesn't operate super well on low amounts of land. Spirit of the Labyrinth isn't particularly strong other than just being a three-power creature. Jitte's usually not good, except for when I very explicitly need it for getting a Douthy Voidwalker off the table or something. Like, the Stoneforge Mystic and Recruiter of the Guards get noticeably worse versus Opposition Agent, but I am hoping to take those off the table anyway. Battle of Bywater's not crazy. It'll get Opposition Agent, Shouldred, Douthy Voidwalker. Let's maybe play that. I don't know whether or not my opponent's build has Bowmasters. I'm going to assume it does. Maybe think about getting rid of some X1s. Like, get rid of Spirit, Spirit. I also don't know whether or not my opponent's build plays Karn. I'm going to assume it doesn't, because I wouldn't be caught dead with Karn if I could avoid it. Maybe I have enough other removal that I don't hedge towards creature removal with Jitte specifically. I could also just keep that. Naturally drawing that in, like, versus Recruiter is kind of a weird thing. Oh, this is fine. I want a second white source, but I have very strong mana denial against non-swamp hands. And a lot of these decks are playing flex lands like Urborg that are not basics. Basic swamp, very good. We can potentially like wisp that or something later. Troll underneath. Okay. Alright, well there's Karn. I don't, I don't think you play this in... Okay, sorry. A Singleton Karn is quite good in this shell still. And if that's our Singleton Karn for Beseech, like, thumbs up. I approve. Alright, opponent going for coating. Uh, that Wisp is not bad. Assuming that things work out in my favor. Uh, which I don't think is a safe assumption. Let's pressure this Karn. So we knock it to two, my opponent will plus it back to three, so they might blow up my basic planes and then I kill Karn. Or they might just minus Karn this turn, pick up a helm. Alright, there's the coating. So I'm going to lose planes, but then take out this Karn. Goodbye Karn. Bam. Drop port, and try to keep my opponent off of Helm Mana. Got Onboard Wasteland, plus another Wasteland waiting. But Basic Swamps are good. Alright, cool. Um, I think I am just attacking here. Like, I think my situation is very bad right now. So I think this is just pedal to the metal, don't play around spot removal spells such as Fatal Push. You've just got to recognize when you just can't. Um, the biggest problem with my hand is that, like, these are all white-white cards, so I'm not waiting on a single land drop, I'm waiting on multiple land drops. So this turn, things are a little different, because now Opposition Agent is active, so the Mom attack makes a little bit less sense here. <sighs> How bad is my spot? Pretty bad. I'm gonna do this. This works towards these longer term. Which I think matters. I'm going to take that out. I am just going to attack with Thalia though. Alright, opponent's at 15. Alright, cool. 
file is very important right now. That's not bad. Not great versus opposition agent right now. Long set 13. Get to port them off of lands. And I'm working towards Stoneforge. Where did I land on Jitte? It is in the deck. Jitte is castable off any land. Sure. File goes up to two. So now opposition agent is down. A mom attack is okay. We'll send them. It says shadow and can't block. And dark ritual is not currently a thing that's on. While opposition agent is down, I will go ahead and drop the stone forge. I think just picking up the jete so that if I draw another colorless land, I have a castable card or to swamp. This is the scary turn. After this, we have vial on three. And Flicker Wisp Trixies go a long way towards making a game more bearable. Yeah, this is A-OK. -okay. We're just like looking to dodge like an Ancient Tomb type card. Reanimate on Troll. Uh, yes. No, I'm, I'm good with that. I'm good with that, you know? Just, uh, <laughs> just A-OK -okay with that. Flicker Wisp. Flicker your troll. Four on board damage. Boop! And we get to play a game three. All right. All right. So that game we saw troll. So we know troll grief reanimate is a package in this deck now. We saw a Karn. Couldn't be multiple Karns still. Rest in peace is like really awkward here. Because... Elm is a thing with rest in peace as well. I might play like a cage. Cage is perfectly fine, unexciting. If I want to hedge against opposition agent, I can like go down a recruiter, pick up a cage. Cage gives me one more reasonable turn one play. This is fine. So I am going to keep this hand. It has some amount of disruption versus combo. Uh, my opponent's not leading on a ley line this time, so they will need both pieces more naturally. We don't have a removal spell for an early. They haven't gotten the memo. They don't know. Is it weird to tell them? Do I just like tell them that Swamp is better than that card? I'll let them figure it out on their own. So in my estimation, Thalia is the best card in this hand. My opponent agrees. And they are going to reanimate the Grief, which probably takes the Mangara. My opponent agrees. Draft Digger's Cage, one turn cycle too late. Wish that was the Recruiter at this exact moment. Say la vie. Yeah, play Port in case my opponent has Wasteland in their mana base. I don't think I end up losing the game to just a grief. Rough. Now, my opponent, like, legit might not be on Besiege and might just be playing the four Karn version, uh, which I think is very bad. But it sure is going to beat me this game. Like, I can remove grief. I don't really take this out. My opponent will destroy my lands forever. I don't have a Pithing Needle or equivalent to just get rid of Karn. Mom never kills Karn. Files off forever. I am comfortable conceding to that. GG's. All right. We are in the great versus a slow fair deck keep mode. And I'm not the biggest fan. But there's a lot of fair blue in Legacy right now. And I think I'm just going to hedge in that direction. We wanted fair greedier blue than that. Okay, all right. Mangara has arrived. Beggars can be choosers. I would love to draw a relevant two drop for this turn cycle. Fuck yeah. Not the strongest little guy, but we'll take it. Are you going farming? Not going farming. Sure. More basics. The wastelands are bad. Yep. Reasonable tempo play. 
I can now attempt to Skyclave to Fairy if I feel like I need to immediately answer that card. I am not sure that I do. I think I play Vile and Lion Sash this turn and then follow up with Skyclave as an answer to this the following turn. I think I'm just more comfortable with that. All right, my shit's in play. All right, Teferi Colossus, and I went farming. Um, probably a mistake to do that at sorcery speed. I would have used one mana to eat something out of graveyard here that I am now not doing. Let's attempt to answer Teferi. Angara off vial is a longer term answer to this problem, should I need one. We go on farming again. We are going farming again. Alright, so Swords happens. Gives my opponent a 3 3, which I will just immediately take care of. Sure. We've got a long term Mangara that we're working towards, uh, but my hand is Gaslight right now. We kept this hand hoping to be playing against, like, either a four color version of this sort of deck where the Wastelands are relevant, or otherwise, like a Delver deck or something. Where the lands are wastelandable. Oops, all ports. Uh, we'll be doing that rather than casting Mangara right now. Here is what? Like 2014? 60 card Death and Taxes versus Blue White Miracles is the uh, matchup of the month. Just fully take my opponent off of white. Prismatic ending means that this vial isn't necessarily going to stick around forever. Ah, a wasteland of a land. Narset, sure. Narset into Days Undoing could be pretty bad for me. A brainstorm. No Snapcaster Mage attack. I'll go up to three. A Stoneforge Mystic. I don't think I'm doing that right now. I think this is Wasteland Tundra. Take my opponent off of two planes and then dump in Mangara. And hope to, honest to goodness, Mangara, some lands, Brainstorm's fine. Now my opponent can Narset through those cards. Getting Spell Pierce. Everybody is Spell Piercing today. True Name Nemesis, okay. Blue White Stone Blade, from the look of things. So now I am on a real clock to actually win the game. There's Mangara. At this point, I can always no to that and always yield to that. A new Mangara. Savage. So I would like to resolve a Stoneforge Mystic. I have succeeded. Aldra Tramples. All right, and my opponent is done with me. No. Okay, I think we're back. Uh, playing against Stoneblade, I would like more answers to True Name Nemesis, and Cataclysm to answer lands and planeswalkers is probably reasonable. What don't I want? Lion Sash can go. Maybe Thalia's? Thalia Cataclysm, not exactly a problem. Like, the nice thing about Thalia is, like, Thalia plus Caracas being protected is, like, a reasonable thing here. Um, it's possible I'm supposed to go down some number of Mangaras. It's possible I'm supposed to go down some number of Swords to Plowshares. But I think I'm just going to lean on the inevitability of Mangara in this matchup. And we'll see whether or not my opponent is back. They might have gotten booted off, too. Um, I will keep this hand. It's a little slow, but file port makes up for a lot of that. Okay, cool. And my opponent is fetching, which means I can just port their stuff initially. And no shuffle. So the thing that's scary is that my opponent could like play a on-the-play Stoneforge Mystic here that gets under my Rashadden port, and that would be annoying. I could maybe eventually beat that with Mangara, but I would really prefer not to. Uh, but here we are. Oh shit, it's just Batterskull. 
Does that mean Cauldra is in hand, or what? Uh, let's play a port. I don't have another play for this turn cycle, so, like, I am just going to force the activation on the Stoneforge now. Or try to. Okay. Opponent, uh, must have Prismatic Ending? Nope. Sure. Interesting. Not saying wrong, just interesting. That Not attacking with that is almost certainly wrong, though. Like, what am I going to put in? Isamaru? Battle of Bywater. So since I have two Mangaras, I am okay playing one out here and potentially having it get countered. Yeah, this is fine. Oh, fuck yeah, we got a Jace for it. Perfectly happy with that. And now we will ultimately just be looking to, like, assemble Mangara, Caracas, Exile, Batterskull, or whatever, and be on with our merry lives. Ooh, we are Jeskai. Back to basics. Uh, annoying, but we have Mangara. File goes up to three. Play this. I think past turn. There's, like, Containment Priest specifically. Uh, yeah, that's fine. You may Jace. This is some old school stuff right here. Activate. Yes. There's Mangara. Always no. Always. <laughs> yeah. So, I can't pull it to the other screen for some reason, but we end up with a 3-2 finish. I honestly think my opponent played that one pretty poorly. Like, they, they conceded quickly, but in addition to that, like, I was actively afraid of their Stoneforge Mystic pulling away this game before I could get my, my, my Mangara engine online. And instead of taking advantage of the early game window where they were highly favored, my opponent instead opted to drag the game on with these things, which is what let me assemble my sort of game-winning combo here. So, yeah. So, Mangara, how are you going to do on your progress report here at the end of 2023? I would say Mangara feels a little slow by legacy standards. Like, it is obviously very powerful when it works. Like, my opponent had multiple scary permanents at the end of that game with, like, Jace the Mind Sculptor, Stoneforge Mystic, you know, Cauldra shortly thereafter, but just said, nope, I am out. And in our Delver match, where, again, our opponent is relatively removal light with maybe four Lightning Bolts, maybe a Brazen Borrower or two in Game 1 scenarios, like, if the removal is expended on these sorts of creatures in the early game, Mangara can still run away with things. I will admit, I think we got slightly lucky in terms of, like, not getting blown out by a Stifle in that match. So something that can happen is, like, you can activate Mangara, hold priority, bounce with Caracas, your opponent stifles the Mangara trigger, and your Mangara is in your hand, and then you have to, like, re-expend mana or re-tap an Aether Vial, and, like, that can end up being a little slow, and we didn't run into any of that. Um, so that was nice for us. So ultimately, like, is this a better end game than something like Yorian? And the answer is probably no. We didn't play against a lot of Orcish Bowmasters today, but, you know, Orcish Bowmasters is one reason why a Death and Taxes deck might want to go away from some number of X1 creatures, or play things like their own Orcish Bowmasters, so that even if an Orcish Bowmasters does eat your Orc Orcish Bowmasters, you're still left with an Orc afterwards. But this is a reasonable deck list. I would not be embarrassed to play this in an event, but is this the most optimal thing in the world? No. Is it full of nostalgia? And do I have great joy after playing this league, though? Fuck yeah. Absolutely. Uh, with that being said, if you need your copies of Mangara of Corindor because you weren't around when the dinosaurs were roaming the Earth, check out Cool Stuff Inc. and use promo code THRABENU to save 5% on your order. And folks, I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. See ya!